Good day to make biochar. <laughs>ladies and gentlemen it's brian back at bidwell canyon farm welcome back to the vlog it is our weekly wednesday vlog and i am joined today by our special guest bernie the biochar retort today's video will be explaining what is biochar why would you want to make it and how we use it here at bidwell canyon farm so if you're new to the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button down below turning your post noties on and giving us a thumbs up, sharing it with your friends so everyone can get educated on why biochar is awesome. Okay, so what is biochar? Biochar is charcoal that is being used in a biological sense or application. In our application, we are adding it to our soil to house nutrients and microorganisms for thousands of years. So first, let's go over the anatomy of Bernie the Biochar Retort. It's a few different parts here, as you can see, and a few key ingredients I will explain. So down below here is our burn chamber, and what this is is just a spot to build an active fire. As your fire is burning down here, it is heating a 55-gallon drum. Inside that 55 gallon drum I was pointing to is all of my construction waste over the course of about a year. Mostly end cuts of 2x4s, 2x6s, there's wood chips, there's some sawdust. Anything raw wood without glue, without paint, no pressure treated. I have heard of people using bones for their biochar which adds calcium to the soil because the minerals get locked up inside the charcoal which is a really cool idea and I would love to try that. Let me know down in the comments if you've done bone char. The drum sits on these angle iron braces and the fire hits the bottom and then travels up and around between this drum and this outside shell. The outside shell, which is below this furnace blanket, is an old pressure tank from a house well system. So the pressure tank has about an inch air gap between itself and the inside 55 gallon drum. The heat from the fire down below comes up, hits the bottom of the drum, surrounds the drum all the way up, and then exits through this little stack which just sits on top of the pressure tank. Now the furnace blanket is a key component to making biochar with a retort method. It's a ceramic fiber. It can withstand high, high temperatures, which you will experience if you get everything right. I'll link to this particular blanket that I use. So if we look into this chamber, you will see this elbow right here. And that elbow enters this 55 gallon drum and it gives all the gases and volatiles a place to escape back into this burn chamber. So we'll get a little fire going here down below to start the burn. Okay, the beginning stages of the retort have started and you can see up above there the gas that's reburning coming out of that spout. So there's a good view of that gas being reignited and just burning out of that. Ooh, it's hot. Ah, what do you think, boy? Things are heating up. So pyrolysis is the process that's happening inside. What is pyrolysis? 
pyrolysis is the thermal decomposition of materials in an inert atmosphere. So inside this drum, there's no oxygen. It's a closed barrel with one spout. And once the pyrolysis process starts, all the gas and volatiles are being pushed out of the spout, but no oxygen is being drawn into the barrel. So once our charcoal is complete, we cap that spout, no oxygen enters, and we're left with a beautiful batch of biochar. Charcoal is a really amazing structure. It's super porous, and there's so much area for microorganisms and nutrients to fill once that structure is created. You can kind of see a flame. Not really though, it's hard in the daylight. If it were night, you could see a flame shooting out, which is cool. It's starting to slow down. It's been about two hours, 10 minutes since we began. The fire is out. So I'm going to install this, just a half inch pipe nipple with a cap on it. Okay, so I've put the cap on the vent. No more gas is being burned. And we have inside the drum a great batch of beautiful charcoal, which we will open up tomorrow when everything cools down. We can open up the drum and check out our bio cha. Our bio cha cha. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. So, this dust swirling around is from me tipping it upside down. Look at that glassy sheen on there. Man, that is killer. So this is really an awesome batch we've just made. And now we're ready to inoculate it. So the cool thing about pure carbon and charcoal is it's edible. The texture might be a little rough to get over. Do I have anything in my teeth? But you've heard of carbon filters for water. This is a filter for the world. Mm, and your bod. This is an exceptional moisture retention unit. So anywhere you have carbon and charcoal in your soil, you have a bunch of moisture that plant roots can access by entering these structures. The barrel has been through a few burns now. I don't know how many more it can withstand. You know, it's blistered up and eventually it will fail. I still have charcoal in my teeth, don't I? The charcoal I just showed you and have still stuck in my teeth, we will take our worm tea, which is water that filters through our worm castings in the worm bin I showed you in one of the last couple videos. We'll take that tea and we'll pour it in to the charcoal and let it soak for two weeks. And over that two weeks, that nutrient dense liquid will soak up into the porous structure of the charcoal and it will be added into the garden either through our compost piles or just directly onto the garden beds once it gets crushed up. The thing I want to try this year is putting the raw charcoal, uninoculated charcoal, into the goatel underneath the straw and letting the goats inoculate it with their urine and their manure and crush it into smaller bits so it saves me some work because usually I would have to take the bigger chunks and crush them up with an axe or a shovel or something to get them into a small enough garden-sized bit. I have seen some folks run them through chippers and shredders but it causes is a lot of dust, so I'm pretty excited to try this goat method, letting the goats do the dirty work.
Hopefully they do their thing and crush it up and excuse me, I'm trying to vlog over here. Ring a ding 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 dong, get the bell on. Come to say hello. My little baby. This is Izzy. My fave. Don't tell the others. So if you're looking to get into the biochar game, which I highly recommend, I wouldn't necessarily go with a design like Bernie. There's a lot of other simpler methods you can do at home, and I will put a few links down below in the description to those sources. So hopefully this has shed some light on biochar, what it is, how it works, and how we use it here at the farm. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll catch you next Wednesday on our next vlog. Thanks again. Bye.